Hey y'all, it's Summer from Hammond's Nest, and today I'm going to show you how to do a pretty cool buffalo plaid mason jar. The first step is to grab your mason jar. I'm using a quart size one in this video. Also, three different color paints. I'm using chalk mineral paint by Dixie Bell in fluff white, driftwood gray, and caviar black. You'll also need a smaller detail brush, a regular paintbrush, and one or two of the foam brushes, which are one inch wide. Also, paper cups or paper plate to put your paint in. Now the first step is actually to get some regular rubbing alcohol, put on a little paper towel, and give your glass a good cleaning. This just degreases and gets rid of all dirt and oils and build up. It preps your jar for painting. The next step is to get the fluff white color and give it one solid coat coverage all the way around. And then I'm even doing the top of the jar, as you can see, I'm, I'm just putting on one thin coat. After that is dry, it's time for coat number two and you're just gonna put that all over just like you did coat number one. And while you watch me paint and work here, um, even though I have sped up this process, I just wanna tell you why I love chalk mineral paint so much. It dries really quickly for one, but it also has a beautiful chalky finish and kind of a rustic feel. It distresses very easily. I use it on furniture, crafting, all sorts of things. So it is my preferred paint for most of my crafting. So. I just wanted to share that. But after you get on that second coat, make sure it's good and dry before you move on to the next step. Next step is to grab the driftwood, which is a light gray and one of your one inch foam brushes. The important thing here is you see me, I'm gonna do vertical stripes going all the way around this jar using my one inch foam brush kind of as a spacer. So you can see me kind of do that there. I'm kind of eyeballing it, not thinking too hard. I've tried this technique with painter's tape and I just didn't love it. This look is so much easier to me. But the important thing is that you don't fully saturate your foam brush. You're using a dry brushing technique. So it means you offload a good bit of your paint onto your cup before you actually drag that brush across your jar. It just makes a really pretty distressed look. Once this step is complete, you don't necessarily have to wait till this is dry. If you're using some kind of chalk paint, it's probably going to be dry enough to move on to the horizontal stripes. So again, you're just basically doing the same thing. Of course, you can't fit as many stripes painting horizontal. But what you're doing is you're trying to make as much of the pattern show. So I started in the middle there on this quart just to leave a little bit on the bottom. And then uh, lastly, I'll do a ring around the top. And you don't even necessarily have to wait for the next step where we're going to be pulling out the, um, the caviar black color by Dixie Bell. You don't necessarily have to wait till your jar is all the way dry because you're using that dry brushing technique. Unless you've accidentally gotten too much paint on the jar, you may want to let it dry. So grab that little detail brush. For this, because you're painting squares, I do recommend a straight edge brush. You're also offloading your brush for this technique. So dry brushing again. And what you're doing, if you can see what I'm doing here, is actually painting where the vertical stripes and the horizontal stripes overlap is what's going to be painted in the black color. You continue doing that all the way around the jar, just where the stripes meet. And this creates your beautiful buffalo check pattern. Now, once you are done completely painting your jar and filling in all the squares all the way around, you'll just want to make sure that you dry it all the way before moving on to the next step. In case you want an extra distressed look and you really want to embrace that perfectly imperfect look, you can easily accomplish that by, of course, making sure it's dry first, like I said, but you can grab a sanding block or sandpaper and, and have at it. Just give it some extra character. I think it adds a lot of character. I personally love distressing many of my crafts. And it kind of makes the colors sort of blend and feather together in a way too. And I just love that Buffalo Plaid makes the prettiest neutral for nearly every holiday. If you choose to paint one, I bet you'll get a lot of use out of it. Lastly, you could spray with a little clear coat for extra protection or sheen, but I did not for this one. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to follow Hammond's Nest for more creative ideas.